Good day, I'm Cody Ann Barrett and welcome to Frontline Business. The government is considering to use the proceeds from the planned sale of its 20% stake in the Jamaica Public Service JPS to pay the over $7 billion it owes to the entity for streetlights. This was announced by Finance Minister Audley Shaw during Wednesday's sitting of the Standing Finance Committee of Parliament. In 2017, the outstanding debt stood at $5 billion. Mr. Shaw said his ministry is looking at options for making the payments. Succeeding governments over the past, you know, more than a decade have had uh, uh, problems with the serious arrears building up with the payment uh, to the public service for street lighting. It has reached a point now where we have to, to make a radical decision about how to dispose of that debt uh, because it has been gradually, incrementally increasing um, at an unacceptable level. So it's a matter that I'm taking as Minister of Finance. I've taken it on board. And we are looking at a number of options, and among them possibly diluting some of the shares that we own in JPS in order to settle this bill. He told members of parliament that the final decision to sell government shares in the JPS rests with the cabinet. He also noted that the approach would be to offer the shares to the public. The National Water Commission and other government agencies owe the JPS another $2 billion. Jamaica owes the CARICOM Secretariat almost half a million dollars and is ahead of schedule to pay off the arrears in five years. The information came by way of Foreign Affairs Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, who appeared before the Standing Finance Committee on Thursday to answer questions about the ministry's budget. Kimberly Wright has more in this report. The budget for the ministry has indicated almost $1 billion towards CARICOM, which is an increase of $150 million. The minister expressed concern about Jamaica's contribution to the regional body and announced that this has become an agenda item for the heads to discuss. We believe as a matter of, of, um, of principle that the levels of, uh, of assessment of contributions of countries needs to be reviewed because we believe Jamaica's is too high and that is something that we will be formally putting forward notwithstanding our commitments to pay down the debt which we have. She also announced that the issue of Jamaica's possible departure from the single market of economy, CSME, in five years will also be addressed at the next CARICOM heads meeting. We have agreed, um, and heads have agreed, that when Jamaica hosts the CARICOM heads meeting in July, that we will have one day dedicated to CSME implementation. And, uh, and the other agenda items on the second day. And that is, has never been done before, that one day of your heads meeting, your heads summit, is going to be dedicated to the CSME. So that is um, certainly progress made in terms of members uh, of CARICOM being focused on the importance of, uh, in, of seeking to make the arrangement work. The Bruce Golding-led Commission on Jamaica's Relationship with CARICOM recommended, among other things, that the country leaves the CSME in five years if other member states do not comply with agreed arrangements. Kimberly Wright, Frontline Business. Michelle Brown will become the new commercial director of J. Ray & Nephew Jamaica Operations. She is the first female appointee with overall responsibilities for the company's demanding portfolio. Prior to joining J. Ray & Nephew, she held several roles in sales, which included Category Development Manager in South Africa. As the new Commercial Director, Brown is expected to continue leading J. Ray & Nephew's sales thrust in the Caribbean. J. Ray & Nephew Commercial Director Cecile Smith Jr. has been appointed to lead Campari's Canada sales outfit as the new Commercial Director based in Toronto. In Thursday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index declined by 3,943 points to close at 297,053. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 54 stocks, of which 17 advanced, 30 declined, and 7 traded firm. The Junior Market Index declined by 64 points to close at 2,860. Among the winners were Access Financial, G-West Corporation, ISP Finance Services, 
Jamaica broilers and Jamaica producers. Stocks declined for AMG Packaging and Paper, Barita Investments, Berger Paints, Blue Power Group and Cable and Wireless. Stocks traded firm for Sibony Group, Consolidated Bakeries, Derrymont Trading, Express Catering and Iron Rock Insurance. Carreras Limited was the volume leader with over 7 million units, followed by Sibony Group Limited with over 4 million units and JMMB Group Limited also with over 4 million units. On the foreign exchange market, banks and cambios are selling the American dollar for an average $128.15. $101.52 is the cost for the Canadian dollar, while it's costing $177.27 for the pound sterling and $156.24 for the euro. News in oil. Oil fell on Thursday by more than 1%, hitting two-week lows on pressure from a strong dollar and worries that surging U.S. crude output might thwart OPEC's efforts to drain global supply. Stock prices bounced back on Wall Street and helped crude futures to bounce off the day's lows. Stocks and oil futures have been more highly correlated in recent weeks. Stocks turned higher after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments to Congress ease fears of faster interest rate hikes. Brent crude and U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI crude fell by more than $1 a barrel. Brent, the global benchmark, lost $1.22 or 1.9% to $63.52 a barrel after sliding as low as $63.19. U.S. crude was down $1 or 1.6% to $60.66 a barrel after touching a low of $60.18. The session lows for both benchmarks were the lowest prices in two weeks. And that's it for Frontline Business. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Regional stories are next after the break.